Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, the Winter Olympics, they are right around the corner, but some American athletes, they're already preparing for the 2024 Games right here in Roanoke. How the women are defining athleticism. Today is the 49th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Hear what the vice president has to say about the law possibly being overturned. And monkeys in Pennsylvania are on the loose. See what officials are doing to catch those furry animals. We appreciate your company here tonight at 6. I'm McKinley Strother. We begin tonight in South Roanoke, where you may have little to no water this evening. You could blame all that on a line that broke here on Longview Avenue. But you can see water started to move onto some of those side and main roads in that area. The Western Virginia Water Authority expects water to return to normal levels in about 6 to 12 hours. Americans are seeing progress in the battle against COVID-19. More than 63% of Americans are now fully vaccinated. And studies show the booster protects against 90% of hospitalizations. John Lawrence tonight speaks to experts about our future with this virus. COVID-19 has been a dominant factor in everyday life for the past two years, ranging from mask wearing in public to lengthy hospital stays. But some health officials say that might change in the not too distant future. We see fewer and fewer people who have never dealt with one form or another of the virus that causes COVID before. And because of that, we're seeing a lot less severe illness, a lot fewer deaths per infection. The number of confirmed cases versus hospitalizations in the U.S. has also dropped since November, according to data from Johns Hopkins University and the Department of Health and Human Services. We have so many more tools now compared to 2020 or 2021, and we are also dealing with, thankfully, a milder variant with the Omicron variant. Among those tools, booster shots, which one CDC study found are 90% effective at preventing hospitalizations. We're talking about somewhere between a cold and the flu is where Omicron falls if you are vaccinated and boosted. Doctors say the bottom line remains. The sooner more people get vaccinated, the sooner the world can get the upper hand on the pandemic. People have just chosen not to be vaccinated, and, and that's their choice. And we will continue to provide their care. But the ones who are not vaccinated are the ones who are flocking to the hospitals right now. And that's creating the problem. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Cases here in Virginia are beginning to pan out. Yesterday, VDH reported 14,000 new cases across our state. That number, of course, is still high tonight, but it is much lower than the 26,000 cases reported back on January 8th. Stay up to date on the pandemic by visiting our website, WSLS.com. Let's take a break from all of that and get you a check of your forecast now. Meteorologist Delaney Warden joins us. It was cold. That's it all I can say. It but, was cold today. But thankfully, the sun was back, so yes. hopefully causing those temperatures to feel a little bit better. But yes, very chilly. All of that, that cloud cover is now off to our east because our cold front has finally been able to move further off to our east as well. We do have some clouds just to our north. Those will start to move in as we head into tomorrow, so seeing a mixture of sunshine and cloud cover. Either way, we're also going to be warmer. Now, at the moment, we are sitting at 29 degrees over in Blacksburg. Our winds are calm, not so much coming in from the north as much anymore. So not really worrying about those temperatures feeling any colder, but look at those beautiful skies there in Blacksburg. We had a very nice sunset just a short time ago. Temperatures mostly in the 20s out there, but here in Roanoke, we're still sitting at freezing, also sitting at freezing in Hillsville. Our coldest spot over in Lewisburg at 21 degrees. Over the next few hours, our temperatures are going to drop a little bit faster than we've seen over the past few evenings because we have our clear skies around. However, either way, downright cold out there. Stay bundled up and we'll take a look at your warmer temperatures coming up here in a few minutes. McKinley. It's certainly something to look forward to. Delaney, thank you. Today is the 49th anniversary of the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision. The ruling established the right to abortion for all American women because of a certain bill working to pass through the Supreme Court. This could be the last anniversary of the law, some believe. Vice President Kamala Harris shares her reflections and the nation's plan to uphold it. But this year, the United States Supreme Court will issue a decision in a case called Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. The court could overturn Roe versus Wade. Our administration has been equally clear. We took an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And we will fight to protect a woman's right to choose. 
Last month in December, the Supreme Court heard arguments over Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. A decision on that is expected by late spring or early summer. A women's cycling team is preparing for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games right here in Roanoke. We're working for you tonight to explain how this can bring financial opportunity to our city. Have a question about current events, new laws? We can help. Just ask 10. It's easy. Go to WSLS.com, click on the menu icon, and click Ask 10. Type your question. We'll get to work on your answer. Ask 10 on WSLS.com. A woman cycling team is preparing for the 2024 Olympics in Paris by making Roanoke their new home. Ten News reporter Alexis Davila tells us what this historic moment could mean for the economy and future generations. Blaring their air horns, the Virginia's Blue Ridge 2024 cycling team is ready to kick off their Olympic training in the Roanoke Valley. Roanoke College grad Shelly Olds remembers saving her dollars to train overseas to compete in 2012 Olympics. Anytime you tell a European or a Russian or a Chinese rider, hey, you can, there's a race in America, it's UCI race, you can come to America, they are like, pumped to come so I think this is this this is like the groundwork for something that could go on to be something amazing. Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge is investing in the team and says the international attraction could lead to a spike in tourism. But sports, economic development, putting us on the map so people know where we are. Isabella Robusto is a NASCAR driver and is now transitioning into cycling. She says more people need to recognize female athletes. And just saying like females can do all of what males can do as well. So it's uh, pretty empowering and pretty cool. For others, the dream to race seemed to be far out of reach. Roxa Habuse arrived to the U.S. in October after evacuating from Taliban rule in Afghanistan. She aims to bring home the gold to prove Afghan women can rise above. It's not easy. It's very painful for me because I work hard and I change people's minds to allow their girls to participate in the team. The founder of the team thanks the community for their support and embracing diversity. We can just um, be those role models, you know, I mean, you can't be it if you can't see it. The athletes will return to Roanoke in March to start training. In Roanoke, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. More news to come. Teachers, they are looking for you. There's a job fair in Salem next week. We'll talk about who exactly they're looking for and how you can register right now. Before we go, we leave you with a live look from our Virginia Tech Sky Cam. Meteorologist Delaney Warden is here with you just after the break with a check of your full forecast. Become a WSLS insider at WSLS.com. Join our family. Get to know us better. And we'll get to know you. And we'll even remember your birthday. Sign up. It's free. Western Virginia Public Education Consortium is hosting a job fair on January 29th. It's from 9 a.m. to 2 in the afternoon. The group is looking for licensed teachers, administrators, and students that are about to graduate. It is being held at the Salem Civic Center. You can find the link to register on our website, WSLS.com. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. The sunshine finally returned for us today. It was very cold out there still, but that sunshine helping our temperatures feel a little bit better outside. Satellite and radar for, for us, very quiet. However, you head a little bit towards our southeast. We're still tracking some of that cloud cover, but not going to be dealing with that. What we will watch move into our area overnight and into tomorrow is up to our north and northwest. Nothing too extreme, just bringing us that mixture of sunshine and cloud cover. E even way, either way, we are seeing a beautiful view from our Sky cam over in Blacksburg, really some very beautiful colors in the skies. As I mentioned earlier, we were seeing a very nice sunset. So if you saw that, please send us your pictures. Our temperatures again, mostly in the 20s. We have a few areas holding on to the 30s. In fact, right at freezing here in Roanoke and Hillsville up towards Hot Springs already in the mid 20s, 29 back towards Smith Mountain Lake along with Lynchburg. Now as we go throughout the next few hours, because we have these clear skies around something we have not seen very much of over the past few days, our temperatures are going to drop a little bit faster than we've seen over the past few nights, but either way, no matter what, it's going to be cold into the mid 20s by 9 p.m. where we'll be staying for a little while. Now, as we head into tomorrow morning, we are looking at the teens and 20s again, but this morning we woke up to single digits in the teens, so a little bit of a, an improvement for us. 22 in Bedford, along with Roanoke, 19 for Floyd and heading towards Covington, also 19 degrees. Throughout the day tomorrow, we will again see that mixture of sunshine and cloud cover. 
temperatures eventually will be returning to the 40s again, something we have not seen very much of over the past few days and a lot closer to where we should be for this time of year. Our average high is right around 47 degrees. So as we make our way across the rest of the region, mostly 40s. However, we may even hold on to some upper 30s in areas like Whitfield at 39 degrees here in Roanoke, 44 and 46 for Alta Vista and South Boston. Over the next several days, though, our temperatures are going to be staying a little bit closer to that average of 47. But then we head towards Wednesday. That's when we're going to see yet another cold front dropping our temperatures once again. And as we round out the end of January, our temperatures are going to remain well below average. So be prepared. We're not done with these cold temperatures just yet. Seven day forecast for the New River Valley staying in the 40s through Tuesday. The chance for precipitation on Tuesday is definitely possible. However, we have kind of reduced that percentage there. Maybe some a mix of rain, even a little bit of snow will be possible, but then we head towards the end of your work week. Those temperatures are going to be back into the 30s, at least briefly until we get to next weekend. You kind of see a little bit more cloud cover heading into next weekend, along with temperatures ranging from the 30s and 40s. Your seven day forecast for the Roanoke Valley, our warmest day is on Tuesday, but we won't have the cloud or we will have the cloud cover around, so it's still going to be a little bit gloomy out there, but yeah. Just a wild ride for us. Obviously, I don't speak for everyone here in Southwest Virginia, <laughs> but I will say I'll take clouds. I'll take cold. I just don't want no more snow. Not right you now. At least can we get rid of what's already out there? You know what? It's nice to have a break since we have been busy over the past mm -hmm. few weekends with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just ugly to look at now. Oh, it's just okay. piled on the side. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? My voice is all high because I'm trying know. to be nice about it. Anyway, all right, just emerged in the late 15th century. And there's never been a black woman titled as a chess master in the U.S. But tonight at 11, we'll introduce you to the women working to achieve that position. And coming up in sports, we have all sorts of hoops to get to. VMI going for a home win. Virginia Tech goes for a road win in Boston. While in Salem, the Maroons, they continue to roll with local products continuing to shine. That and more next in sports. Ahead for us, the cost of meat is way up. We'll tell you why. And the president's plan for getting prices back down. And how a grandmother helped police bust a scammer trying to get money from seniors. All caught on camera tonight. Your news and notes, NFL playoffs, Bengals leading the Titans as we speak. 49ers and Packers kick off later tonight, and the Dogs are on the road tonight at Huntsville. We'll give you the score of that one coming up later on 10 Sports at 11. All right, Eric. So crews apparently are searching for four monkeys in the woods of a Pennsylvania house. You know, sometimes right. people say the stories in the news are ridiculous, and, and <laughs> this is it. According, this is to, a, according to police, a trailer with 100 monkeys crashed into a dump truck yesterday afternoon. The state game commission is looking for the missing monkeys by using a helicopter. They only weigh about three pounds. That's... What would you do if you came across a three-pound monkey? I was not expecting that question. <laughs> right, what you would never, you do? I don't know. You do, I mean, you know, how do you prepare yourself for that? I don't know what I would do. And let's, let's be clear. Hey. Let's be clear. I weigh a lot more than three pounds, but I still would be afraid of that thing. Well, I don't know if I'd be afraid, but I don't. Oh, I love your bravery. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're smart and brave. <laughs> You're fantastic. Let's get, give us the last check of the weather. OK, fine. <laughs> Temperatures tonight dropping into the teens and 20s by tomorrow morning. So still staying very cold and also seeing those clear skies on top of that. Over the next few days, our temperatures will remain in the 40s and very close to where we should be this time of year until we start to bring in yet another cold front next week. That's going to drop those temperatures back to the 30s, at least briefly, and definitely seeing some more cloud cover heading into next week. All righty. Well, I'm going to go work on being just as courageous as meteorologist Delaney Warden. It's impossible. Oh, well, oh. <laughs> well, NBC Nightly News is next. I hope to see you back here at 11. <laughs>